as we said at the top of the show, for today's A Block, we're staying right here on the block, so to speak. We're going to focus on news that's been happening here in Brooklyn. So let's get right to it. Joining us are two old friends of the show. Stephen Witt is the editor of Kings County Politics. Nice Hello. to see you again, good friend. Thank you. And Richard Burroughs is an author and blogger with the Brooklyn Reader and, of course, the man about town. <laughs> All right, so, you know, for the A Block, we're not talking national news here. Mm -hmm. we're, right. talking we're keeping it local. News. We're talking Super about local. Brooklyn, Brooklyn, right. and Brooklyn. So what's going on in the interweb, Steve? Well, I was really fortunate and proud I broke kind of a major story, and I was really I'm excited. People were calling, congratulating me, and that is a—, a and it actually has a history, is a few years ago, I was, before I started the blog, I was a reporter, editor for Our Time Press in Bed-Stuy, and I got a tip, it was 2014, that the, that the mayor personally intervened to get a vacate order lifted. Mm -hmm. And with Rabbi Indig, who is Moshe Indig, who's a big fundraiser for the mayor. At the time, I was economically hurting. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I investigated it. It certainly had credence, but it was the first year of the mayor, and all the media had like a love fest with him. Mm. You know, it was the honeymoon period. Mm -hmm. and, you didn't want to rock the boat then. Yeah, mm -hmm. and isn't I, that the perfect time to rock the boat? The, the, I mean, Maybe it's hot off the press. The thing you know, is, if I was with the Daily News or the Post, and I had the backing, but I was with the mom and pop African American Weekly, okay, mm -hmm. and I just they could that would have been the perfect school. Well, you know, like, it would yes. have been, and and David, the editor, I kind of begged off because I didn't want to get in the mayor's bed. Side, but long story short, and and I admit it, and it always haunted me. Mm. Okay, right. so you feel bad about it. So long story short, fast forward a couple years. Yeah, and what's I'm, happened it, since it then? It always that stuck that it yeah. didn't feel good, and okay. I didn't feel right about it. So um, in the meantime, I'm I'm like reading is under investigation, and the whole time it's in my thing. And then I was like, you know. Damn the mayor! It wasn't right, mm -hmm. and I'm going to write about it, and I'm going to give my notes to Preet Bahara. So I called their press office, and I said, "I got something you might be interested in, and I want to give you the notes." The only thing I ask is, "I'm a reporter, and if and if, you know if something comes of it, give me the heads up. I want the exclusive because I had the story." Mm -hmm. So I gave him the notes, and three days later, I read in the poster, looking at Indic. Then I read, I read the Times that, oh, they're bringing him in an indig. And I'm like, you know what? Damn that. It's my story. So I wrote the story. And I wrote the story in the Daily News and the Post, and everybody picked it up. And it turns out, you know, and I explained in the story why I didn't do it at the beginning. Mm -hmm. and, and it really says something about the major media in New York City. I mean, I was guilty, and I should have reported it. But it also behooves that at the time, Nobody wanted to get down on, on Bill. Right, okay. right. So can you just walk us through right. in what really the plain actual terms? The, was. the actual story mm -hmm. is that the uh, Rabbi Indig and the and I'm Jew, the Satmar sect, mm -hmm. they're, they're really big in development. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they sometimes would, some developers within the community, I don't want to paint the whole thing, would sometimes do stuff without building permits. They would do, they, they kind of cut a few corners. They cut a few corners. Mm -hmm. Bureaucratic corners. Mm -hmm. And yes, yeah. and there was a uh, girls' school that they were building, and they were putting actually classes in the basement, and it wasn't up the code. And the inspector said, "You got to vacate it." Because Becky it's, came in, it shut it down, safe. shut mm -hmm. it down. And the person that signed off on it said, "Hey, by the way, I'm doing this under protest." Or was no, it? well, what happened is. The, somebody got a call, and they got the borough commissioner there of the building. And while he was there, it's alleged that the mayor got on index phone and said, hey, these are my friends, and lift the order. Well, so they kept the building open. Yeah, they, they lifted the vacate order. And, the, it, and the, they finished the construction. If you look, at, to do if you the look at the actual order with lifted, the inspector said, as per borough commissioner Gluckman, in other words, it kind of implies that this inspector, if there was a fire and people got killed, he... You well, know, in your right, opinion, right, right. at the time, mm -hmm. would you say it's sort of just like a, well, like a quid pro quo sort of situation? Is it that blatant, or...? I think that the... the well, he's a fundraiser. Yeah, right? he yeah. he's fun. a huge he fundraiser. Funds he's right. for he's Bill huge. So you scooped it. Right. Huh? I scooped it. And I'm, you know, I'm... But you didn't, in the basketball parlance, you was open, you should have took the shot. 
Mm. When I was hoping. Yeah, 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 I was guilty of that. Yes, it, yes. The only thing I could say, though, is in my defense, and there's no, no defense, really, okay. but I will say in my defense that I had worked for News Corp and Courier Life for 10 years beforehand. I took a buyout to to write a, you know, a novel. Right. And the buyout was good, the money was running low. Right, right. You know, yeah. and the economics have... of the time and the way the media was at the time. Right. I mean, Errol okay. Lewis so, so... had me on, on on, on News One, and I thought he was going to ask me, and he was having a love fest because <laughs> right, what he asked right, me right, about right, was my biracial yeah. marriage. Right. So, yeah. was, uh -huh. so now no more love fest, right? He's being right, investigated. Right, so, right, is this, exactly. so is this now yeah, part yeah, of? Yeah, so, so will this now be part of kind of the larger investigation into all of his fundraising or this whatever it is might, that's happening it now? It might or might not be the thing that right. could bring him down, but we don't know. He might escape an indictment, but. In, in and this is just my journalistic feeling. Mm -hmm. he, he he'd be very hard to trust from now on. He's mm. he's oh. done this a couple of times. I mean, yeah, some yeah. damage keeping, is keeping, done. Keeping, a lot of keeping smoke. it in sort of mm -hmm. this sort of vein in this part yeah. of the community. Uh, there's been a lot of sort of anti-Semitic. Um, yes, yes. Incidents, incidents throughout right. the nation and locally. And, here. and, it, that, and, and it's kind of it. It's sort of a. Uh, you know, when things happen nationally, mm -hmm. um, often like something that has like a, 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 a local component to it as well, because mm -hmm. um, when bomb threats, um, and it's like literally, I'm not sure how uh, like the uh, demographics of where like high concentration of Jewish um, communities are at, mm -hmm. but New York is really, really a highly sort of, uh, it's, a, it's a several large Jewish communities. Yeah, and a lot um, of them are here. And a lot Brooklyn. of them here in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and it's really weird because, like, with, with you kind of like, you know, people that are Trump supporters mm -hmm. are saying that it's no, like, direct correlation to his administration and, like, the energy and the atmosphere that they're platforming right. for people to sort of feel emboldened mm -hmm. to almost make these. These a lot of them are hoaxes, like they, but but so many of them, like they they won't all be hoaxes. So like they have to like, and Jemani Williams is mm -hmm. like really getting behind, mm -hmm. you know, sort of speaking out and and let, because the last one was upstate, um, not upstate in Westchester, Westchester. on the uh, Scarsdale mm -hmm. border, mm -hmm. um, and it really hasn't happened um, like in any of the the Brooklyn communities yet. So what, um, what is Jemani Williams sort of? Well, he's he, he, basically what he's saying is that. Um, you know, we all have to sort of um, get in front of this because we can't have a "it's not us" mm -hmm. sort of a mentality. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because if you're if you're like doing bomb threats and, and, and hoaxes and calling in and and kids and centers like kids centers like they're doing it like you know they're threatening like religious institutions, places where people worship, and it's just uh, you know. If it's that group first, mm -hmm. then you never know who, who the next right. group is. Right, it's a direct right. relation to the rhetoric coming out of the White Absolutely. House. Absolutely, right. it is. You, we cannot employ an attitude of waiting for him to come for us. Exactly. Like anybody he comes for, we have to stand in solidarity exactly. about that. But on the flip side, you know, uh, the president did make uh, some comments, uh, I believe, the other day to the effect of. We don't know uh, who is, uh, you know, sort of desecrating these these sites, and it could be someone from the other side mm -hmm. trying to blame. Yeah. So, and that's the that's whole politics of it, right? You know, so it's it's always like some political jousting to try to like so let's maybe throw it, it back on someone politics. else. Let's keep it with politics, Senator Hamilton. Yes, yeah, Senator. A lot going on there. What <laughs> is going on? He, Senator Hamilton uh, joined the Independent Conference, Independent Democratic Conference in uh, the Senate. And this, uh, this in Senate, November, right? Yes, in November. November. And w it's, it's a very contentious issue because the Democrats control the Assembly, and they've been trying forever to control the Senate. And they get close once in a while. Then you have Sk Simka Felder, who always conferences with the Republicans. Mm -hmm. And I think Senator Hamilton, he, he, to his defense, he's a very active senator. Mm -hmm. he, did, he did the campus in Brownsville. He's really one of the he's, most he's active. Right We've had him here several times yeah. to talk to him. Why does he feel it was in his best interest for his constituents for him to join the IDC? I think that the that he could get more done. I think that the Democrats 
have have a problem. They've got to work across the right. aisle, and if they can't compromise, then you know they can say he's a renegade and he shouldn't have joined and he's conferencing the Republicans. But you know, I I think that there needs to be room to work across the aisle. You can't be so idealistic. So mm -hmm. explain for us why working for the IDC might preclude that working across the aisles. What what does it actually mean to have joined that conference? Well, what they mm -hmm. they didn't join the Republican conference. What they did was they they uh, what was it called? I forgot the word. It's like an alliance or something, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Well, but they broke away from the Democrats. They broke mm -hmm. away from the Democrats. Right. And they're an independent sort of body. Right. And they're working with the Republicans. Now, the thing about it is, it's that an, it's a. It's enough of them now that they were, were to come back into the Democratic fold, right. and then the one Republican, uh, then the, the if Simca, would. If Simca, yeah, then they would have a majority right. by one. Well, they would and they wouldn't because Perkins mm. just won uh, the yeah, city council. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's so close. And then the the other issue, and it's kind of the the elephant in the room, mm -hmm. is. Andrea Cousins, who's the chair of the Democratic conference. The, Jeff, there's some in the independent conference feel that she should be replaced. Okay. That she hasn't, you know, as, as a symbolic person, as a woman of color, being the first chair is really good, but is she able to do the job of politicking? Mm. Keep it. Well, there was actually a really great uh, quote, I think, by Reverend Al Sharpton when they were asking him about the IDC. Mm -hmm. And basically, he was saying that. You know, people need to take care of their constituents and shouldn't necessarily right. be beholden to any party. Right, and right. so he said, hey, right. you know, the Democrats don't own any of them. Right. So if you can not, still you get, it done, you get it done, what does it, done. it matter? There, you know, there's, there should, in my mind, within the, the black community, for a long time now, they're, the Democrats just kind of depend on their vote. Exactly. They only come That's around right. every couple of years. Speaking, it, it's speaking of the black community, mm -hmm. uh, author mm -hmm. Ibram X. Kendi? Yes. Um, he has an amazing, he's an, he's an amazing author. He has uh, several books and he's written, written a couple of journals. Um, but he he's, has a book called Stamped from the Beginning, mm -hmm. um, which really speaks to the the beginnings of racism. The beginnings mm. of the ideas. The beginning of, of the ideas Oof. of racism and how it, you know, how it moved from like from the 15th century, how it moved from like I think it was Portugal, Portugal and yeah. then you know how it was sort of exported to you know Great Britain and then how it was transferred over to America and like because ra like racism isn't natural, right? You know, it had to like someone had to actually. Come up with the idea. Mm -hmm. Like it was mm -hmm. an idea, the like, mm -hmm. like you know, and how we can benefit from that. Right. Exactly. Then it, then it evolved, and now it's like this, and it's become like, and it's so entrenched in society that it's almost like you almost forget that it it's had a beginning. Right. It began somewhere, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like we, we take it for granted because it's now it's it's almost right. like it's so ubiquitous. It's so ubiquitous. ubiquitous. Like you, yeah. it's, you're so close to it, you can't like it's like standing next to. A really tall building, you know. You can't even see the out the the, the, the form of it because you know you're too close to it. It's no, too big. What day is that? So what's happening today? Okay, so that's today. What and he's the, having a um 6 a, a six p.m. He's having a, um a talk. Um, and I believe it's a book signing as well. Yeah. Um, it's about Weeksville. And you know what? To be honest, Weeksville just don't get enough love. They don't. And Weeksville. So you have to come back and, and tell us all about it. Yes. Because you're absolutely right. Yes. So much amazing programming. Weeksville, gets, Weeksville it needs more love. In a quick sense, it. what is Weeksville? Excellent. It's important. Well, Real Weeksville. Quick. You see that? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it is a historically uh, black owned uh, community. It was the first in the black Center. community in New York. Right, mm -hmm. and now now it's a community center. And it's a museum. And it's a museum, and, yeah. right? Right. Oh man, you got a camera. And go, and <laughs> let's all, right. all go we're, today we're at six for the reading. Congratulations on the big school. Yes, mm -hmm. everything yes, comes man. around again. Yeah. So exactly. timing for everything.